if there is anything for me to address at all with you, it's that uh, you know, it's the one thing that has bothered me is seeing people wrap politics up into this. Uh, I'm disappointed to see, like, it's aggravating seeing people on conservative news try to identify with me like I'm one of them. It's aggravating seeing certain musicians and politicians act like we're buddies and, and act like we're fighting the same struggle here, like that we're trying to present the same message. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and I've tried to be polite to everybody and um, I've talked to hundreds of people the last two weeks. But it seems like certain people want to just ride the attention of this song to maybe make them their own selves relevant and that's aggravating as hell. The other thing that I find aggravating is, uh, well, you know, like, it was funny seeing my song in the, it was fun, it was funny seeing it at the presidential debate. Because it's like, I wrote that song about those people, you know? So for them to have to sit there and listen to that, uh, that cracks me up. <laughs> uh, but it was funny kind of seeing the response to it. Like, that song has nothing to do with Joe Biden, you know? It's a lot bigger than Joe Biden. Um, that song is written about the people on, the, on that stage. And a lot more, too. Not just them, but, but definitely them. This is a singer who goes by the name Oliver Anthony, whose song Rich Men North of Richmond just hit the number one spot atop US and global charts. The song was also adopted as something of an anthem among the conservative political class, who decided that he spoke for them and they spoke for him, an idea that he clearly wasn't thrilled with, as evidenced by the clip I just played, which was his reaction to this moment at the Republican debate. As we sit here tonight, the number one song on the Billboard chart is called Rich Men North of Richmond. It is by a singer from Farmville, Virginia, named Oliver Anthony. His lyrics speak of alienation, of deep frustration with the state of government and of this country. Washington, D.C. is about 100 miles north of Richmond. These rich men north of Richmond, Lord knows it all. Just want to have total control, want to know what you think. So, Governor DeSantis, why is this song striking such a nerve in this country right now? What do you think it means? Our country is in decline. This decline is not inevitable. It's a choice. We need to send Joe Biden back to his basement and reverse American decline. And it starts with understanding we must reverse Bidenomics so that middle class families have a chance to succeed again. We cannot succeed as a country if you are working hard and you can't afford groceries, a car or a new home while Hunter Biden can make hundreds of thousands of dollars on lousy paintings. That is wrong. We we also cannot succeed when the Congress spends trillions and trillions of dollars. Those rich men north of Richmond have put us in this situation. And finally, we need to lower your gas prices. We're going to open up all energy production. We will be energy dominant again in this country. I showed it could be done in the state of Florida. I pledge to you as your president, we will get the job done and I will not let you down. First of all, the notion that these people on that stage can identify with the struggles put forward in this song is laughable. Every single one of those candidates on that stage is a millionaire. Some of them are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. At least one is worth over a billion. And the current frontrunner in the Republican Party has his name on airplanes and buildings and takes photos like this one. So not for nothing, but it really is rich, pun intended, for these people to pretend as if they're the saviors here when very, very clearly they're the very villains that Oliver 
Anthony sings about. I think it's telling too that DeSantis' answer here is that America is a nation in decline, so let's humor him on this point. Let's think for a moment about when this decline began, if we're really going to focus on the one point at which the economy stopped working for middle and lower class Americans. Here's a chart that showed the divergence of the classes, and take a look at when it started. 1980. Who was president in 1980 and what policy did he champion? Ronald Reagan and Reaganomics. The same exact trickle-down economic policies that the GOP espouses today, where the ultra-rich are given all the incentives and the poor are told, don't worry, it'll eventually trickle on down to you. Only small problem, it doesn't. And it hasn't in almost 50 fucking years. And that's why the lines on that chart are getting further and further away from each other. But still Republicans push these policies and these lies because while they feed the masses lip service, they are feeding their rich donors in the form of tax cuts and loopholes and carve-outs. Need more proof? Take a look at the effective tax rate of the 400 richest families in America compared with the bottom 50% of Americans. Look at that plunge in 1980 when Reagan cut the top tax bracket from 73% to 28%. And then look ahead to 2018, the year after Trump's 2017 tax cut took effect, when the 400 richest families in America officially and finally paid a lower tax rate than the bottom half of Americans. Thanks to Republicans, billionaires are now paying a lower effective tax rate than nurses and teachers and cashiers. So if your position is that America is in decline, maybe, just maybe, that may be owed to the fact that an entire political party is owned by a billionaire class that has used it to squeeze all of the wealth out of the bottom 99% of Americans. And here's a hint. That party isn't the Democrats. DeSantis also invokes Bidenomics, which is really something considering the whole point of Bidenomics and the reason Republicans hate it so much is because it actually is geared toward the working class. The Inflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS Act have together led to a renaissance in American manufacturing with the staggering 800,000 manufacturing jobs added. That is helping the working class Americans. Those jobs in chips and solar and batteries have also prepared us for a clean energy future where not only are jobs higher paying and more stable, but they're better for the environment the burden of which falls on lower class Americans. Again, that helps the working class. And don't take my word for this agenda success because the numbers speak for themselves. 13 and a half million jobs added, record low unemployment rates for blacks, Hispanics, those with disabilities, a 50 year low unemployment rate for all Americans, a 70 year low unemployment rate for women. Real wages are now outpacing inflation, which has fallen for 12 straight months. The share of working age Americans in the workforce is at a more than 20 year high. Union membership is surging, allows workers to to exercise power against predatory companies any way you cut it. Bidenomics is working and it's working for the working class. Now look, as for the song itself, I'm not here to analyze some guy's music. I understand why the right latched onto it, why they felt like it was right for politicization. There is a line in the song that says, Lord, we got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to eat, and the obese milk and welfare. Well, God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds. Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down. Oliver Anthony scapegoats the same thing that conservatives scapegoat, like for example, welfare. But I'll just say this very simply. The reason that the working class isn't getting a piece of the pie is not because people poorer than them are taking it. The biggest con in this country is people making millions of dollars a year, convincing people making $50,000 a year that people making $10,000 a year are the problem. You are not worse off because people on welfare are taking your crumbs. You are worse off because the ultra wealthy only allow us crumbs and convince convince us that that's acceptable. And look, I want to be careful not to fall into the same trap that Oliver Anthony is calling out in this video. In the same way that I'm critiquing Republicans for exploiting the singer and his song for their own political benefit, I don't want to do the same because clearly, admittedly, this song isn't about one political party. It's not intended to serve as a cudgel for one party over the other. But what I can do is make the case, the best I can and in a way that I feel is honest, that the people I support in government are taking seriously what I think are the issues underlying this song. And that is, quite simply, that regular people are getting screwed while the rich get richer. The people I support in our government are doing what they can to prevent that from happening. And I'm damn sure you can't say the same about Republicans. About a party whose sole legislative achievement during the Trump era was a tax cut for billionaires. About a party that's blocked increases to the minimum wage. The party that's blocked pro-union legislation. The party that's blocked Medicaid expansion. The party that's blocked efforts to allow the government to negotiate lower drug prices. The party that's blocked universal pre-K and childcare and paid family leave. If Republicans want to 
pretend that they're the party of the working class, they'd have a little more luck convincing us if they did one single thing to actually help the middle class. So again, while this song isn't mine to critique, I can at least in good faith and in good conscience push back on these smug Republican politicians who will fall over themselves to glom onto some guy's viral hit because they think they're brand aligned, but they're not. Because while these politicians might view themselves as sympathetic to the plight of the working class, in reality, they're the ones responsible for it. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.